Hey friends, I'm Steph from stephaniejenkins.com and cheapskatecook.com and oh, this is a mess. We've, um, hmm, I've got a little bit of a mess here. I could have cleaned it up before I turned on the camera, but then I was like, no, I think I kind of want to be more just real. This space on my wall isn't always perfect and cleaned up. <laughs> got a cookbook here. Dehydrator, I found at a thrift store. A vacuum, I was using it to clean out the dehydrator. Toothbrush and scrubbies, kombucha. <sighs> And then I was like, you know what? This is just me. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. It's fine. But apparently, what I'm gonna do is uh, get on the camera and then start mom explaining my mess. <laughs> We're gonna talk about saving money, eating healthy, and you know, being intentional and all that. And it's okay if if you've got a mess. You know what? This is bothering me. I'm just gonna let's just. I can be real and clean up at the same time, right? All right, you did not click on this video to watch me mom explain my messes. You came to talk about sourdough. Today we're going to talk about this. This is a slice of our very favorite sourdough bread. I know it doesn't look like much. I know it looks like it didn't rise at all. It's kind of hard. It's but listen, it is the very best sourdough bread and I've made all different kinds. The reason why it is the very best sourdough bread is because not only is it delicious and flavorful and a crowd pleaser, but it is also the easiest sourdough bread you can make. I am not kidding. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, it's super easy. All you need to do is do 12 steps. No, no. This is, this is one of those things where you mix everything into a bowl, you let it sit overnight, and then the next day, you pour it onto a baking sheet and you bake it. That's it. And that's why it's, you know, kind of a flat focaccia type bread. Anywhere that I'm supposed to bring a snack regularly, I have a couple of different things that I tend to bring. And this bread is very high on that list. It always gets compliments. It's always inhaled, even by kids. And my family gets super excited every time I make this, even though I make it like literally all the time. All right. I literally just had to take a break from filming this because my son came in and and was trying trying to take all the bread that I'm using for this video. It's our favorite bread. Now I have made all kinds of sourdough. I've been doing sourdough for a very long time. I wanna say four or five years now. When you are starting out with sourdough, I think it's really important to have an easy win. Sourdough is enough of a learning curve. It is a huge learning curve. But once you know how it works and how to fit it into your life, it's actually a pretty simple process. I needed an easy win and I needed to see that it was going to fit into my routine without like consuming all of my time. I like to save money, I like to eat healthy, and I like to live not in the kitchen. Okay, we're gonna start out approximately eight, five, 12 hours, something like that, before you actually mix the bread together. You're gonna need to feed your sourdough starter. So here I have a sourdough starter that I just poured the discard into one jar, and then I have a big spoonful left in the jar, and I'm gonna feed that big spoonful. The discard that I have in the more full jar is gonna go back in the fridge, and when the jar is full, then I usually just make pancakes with it. Recipe for that is on my blog. So I'm gonna feed my sourdough with 80 grams of water and 80 grams of flour. I use unbleached, all-purpose flour, and I use a scale to make sure everything is measured properly. I really tried to do sourdough without purchasing a scale, and I'm just, it's so much easier so much easier just get the scale it's like 10 bucks it will save you so much time your sourdough starter and your bread will turn out so much better thousand percent worth it give it all a good stir you can see here i made a little mark with a dry erase marker so that i can see how much it rises i don't usually do this but i just wanted to show you for this video and then i take a canning jar and i turn the like inside part upside down so that it doesn't seal and then i put on the lid and set it aside for the next 8 to 12 hours the next day, you can see that the sourdough starter has risen like two to three times its height. You want lots of little bubbles in there and you're ready to make the bread. Back in here with the scale, I'm gonna use a thousand grams of flour. This is unbleached all-purpose flour. 
Sometimes I mix it with some whole wheat flour. Sometimes I mix it with some spelt flour. It just depends on what kind of bread I wanna make that day. And then pour it all into the bowl. And now we're going to do the water. I'm gonna do 800 grams of water and then give it all a really quick stir. You're not trying to combine it completely. You're just kind of letting the flour and the water absorb a little bit while you measure out the rest of the ingredients. Back on the scale with the same bowl I've been using for measuring everything, I'm going to measure out 150 grams of my sourdough starter. This should take pretty much all of the sourdough starter that's in it, leaving just enough so that you can feed it again and then set it back on the counter for another batch of bread. Next we have the salt. I'm gonna do like 20 grams of salt. I have this, you know, pretty pink salt. Just use regular salt if that's what you have, no big deal. This is just what I had. Then you're going to pour it all into the bowl. And I like to stir the starter in first and then I'll add the salt later. Salt kind of negatively affects the starter's rising ability, something like that, I don't know exactly. It's something that I've learned and read over time. So I stir it all in separately and then I'll sprinkle the salt on it and give it another stir. You might notice I'm stirring this in a very specific way. I don't know what this technique is called. It's kind of like when you're folding something in. It helps the bread come together a little better. This bread recipe does not require any kneading, but I found that stirring it together like this kind of helps. You're gonna be stirring it one more time, but first we're going to let it rest for like 20 minutes. I let my sourdough proof in the oven with the light on, so I'll take a bit of masking tape and I'll put it over the baking controls so that I don't accidentally turn on the oven while I've got bread in there. Pop the bread in there, set the timer for like 20 minutes and walk away. Twenty minutes later, there's not gonna be much of a change. I like to take my hands and I'll actually do the folding thing just with my hands. You can use a spatula if you don't wanna get your hands dirty, but you can see the breads become more elastic and more cohesive, and stirring it together this one last time helps make sure all the ingredients are mixed in. I've tried a lot of sourdough recipes that do this step like four or five, six times. But for this recipe, I really tried to eliminate any extra steps so that it's really as simple as possible while still getting really great results. At this point, I put a towel or a napkin over the top of the bowl, pop it back in the oven, and I let it sit for a good five to 12 hours. 12 hours is my favorite. I think that's when it's at its peak and you're gonna have the best results. For this video, because of the timing with lighting and recording and all of that, I only let it rise for about five hours. So you can see it's pretty risen, it's very bouncy. If you let it sit for another 12 hours, then you're gonna get like lots of big bubbles and hills. I remove the masking tape from the oven controls and I'm gonna set the oven to 450 degrees. While the oven's preheating, I will take my parchment paper, I reuse it and I stick it in a bag in the freezer. I bake this bread on the same parchment like two or three times before I finally toss it and get fresh parchment. This one's got a hole in it, so I'm going to put another on top of it. And then I'm gonna pour a generous drizzle of olive oil onto each baking sheet. And I try to make sure I've got a little bit of olive oil on my hands before I start scooping out the bread dough. You can see it's a very wet dough. There's no way I'm grabbing this with my hands without making a huge mess. So I just pour it about half of it out onto each pan. And then I like to put another drizzle of olive oil over the top and I kind of spread it out by kneading the dough with my fingers. I'm not trying to make sure that the top is really smooth or anything. It's actually better if it's got lots of little divots in it. Most of those will actually smooth out while it's in the oven. When the oven is preheated, I just pop them in and set the timer for 15 minutes. When the timer goes off, I swap the bread. So the one that's on the bottom goes on the top, the one that's on the top goes on the bottom, and that way they can bake more evenly. Another 15 or 20 minutes later, and it's done. I know this isn't exactly what people picture when they think about baking sourdough bread, but this is what works for my family. It is delicious, it is easy, it is budget friendly. Look at all those holes, I love it so much. If you let it rise for like 12 hours, then there'll be even more and the flavor will be even deeper and more delicious. At this point, I usually just slice it up and we will eat it throughout the day. If I wanna 
make sandwiches, I'll slice it up into big pieces like this and then cut it into two thin slices like this. Those fit in the toaster or they can just eat it plain. And this makes a really delicious sandwich too. And that is our favorite easy, budget-friendly sourdough bread. It helps us eat long ferment, delicious sourdough bread on a regular basis, even amidst all of the normal, busy life stuff. I'm Steph from stephaniejenkins.com and cheapskatecook.com. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I will see you next time for more ways to save money and eat healthy.